I'm going to be showing you how to use Chrome Canvas on a very basic level because we're going to be using Chrome Canvas for our next project. Now Chrome Canvas is a free online app that allows you to do some basic drawing functions. First thing you want to do is you want to make sure you're using your Chrome browser which looks like this when you're accessing Chrome Canvas. So after you use Chrome, uh, Chrome as your browser, you're going to go to canvas.apps.chrome. I left this URL or this website address on your Google Classroom so you can also find it there. You're going to have to sign into your Google, Google account also. This will allow you to save all of your work when you're using Chrome Canvas. Now when you sign in, you're going to get to a screen that looks like this. We're going to be learning how to use Chrome Canvas from a new drawing. So when this screen pops up, you're going to click right here on this blue button that says New Drawing. Now I'm going to be demonstrating how to use the tools, the basic tools right here. This is the toolbar on the left side of the screen and how to use the basic functions of layers right here, which I'll talk about later, which looks like a stack of two sheets of paper. I'm going to click that button again or that icon to get rid of the layers. Now, these are the tools you want to use for Chrome Canvas. There's a pencil, a pen, a marker, chalk, and an eraser. The first thing you want to do is you want to decide which tool you want to use. So I'm going to click on pencil first. I'm going to be using all of these during this video, but I just want to show you what you can do with each one of these tools. Now, if I go up here to the top, I can click on a circle and choose what color. Notice there are two options. One that says palette, which are predefined colors that Chrome Canvas lets you choose from. And notice when I click on them, they change the color of my pencil tip and the pencil body. And it changes the color of the circle to show you which one you're currently on. If you don't like any of these colors or you want to choose a different color, you can click on custom, use this slider right here, and after you slide it where you want it, you can click within this big rectangle to choose the tone of the color or the shade and tint of that color that you want to use. So I'll use a light purple and I'm using a pencil. After you choose the color, you can also change the size by sliding it to the right to make it bigger or sliding it to the left to make it smaller. So I'm going to put it somewhere in the middle for right now at 50. Opacity means how much you can see through whatever you're drawing with. If you put it at 100, that means it's 100% opaque, which means it's completely solid. That means you can see right, you cannot see through it. But if I move it to the left all the way to the number one, it's going to be invisible, which means you can you can see through it all the way. So I'm, I'm going to put mine at 100 right now because I don't want to see through it at this moment. Okay. After you choose your drawing instrument, the color, the size, and opacity, what you're going to do is you're going to draw a vertical line that separates your paper down the middle like this. Now you can use your finger, a mouse pad, a stylus, or a separate mouse if you have one. Okay, so I'm just going to draw a line straight down the middle. It does not have to be perfect and it is going to be hard to draw, but that's why we're practicing. Okay. After you draw your line down the middle, I want you to add some layers. So I'm going to click on this layer button and by default they give you one layer. Okay, So you're going to add another layer. And notice that you can tell which layer is activated by this blue outline right here. So when you create a new layer it automatically activates that layer. Next I'm going to change my color. I'm going to go to red and I'm going to choose a dark red over here. And I'm going to change the size. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And I'm going to keep it at 100% opacity. Okay. And we're going to label our paper, our canvas. So on the left side, now you can see there's something that just popped up by accident. If something happens that you don't like, you can either erase it or there's also an undo button right here, this arrow. If I click on that, it will undo that. So I'm going to go back go back to my layers actually. Click on this layer and I'm going to draw that line again. To separate my paper in two. 
after I do that I'm gonna go back to my new layer and I'm gonna call this geometric so I'm drawing this out there is no type tool so we're practicing drawing everything okay now geometric shapes are shapes that you learn about in math class you usually make them with a tool like a ruler or a protractor since we're just drawing everything these are not going to be perfect geometric shapes so you're just going to practice drawing geometric shapes an easy way to remember what a geometric shape is is if, if it has a name that's commonly accepted if I were to ask most people what shape this is they would be able to tell me that I'm drawing a square now to make it a shape you have to close it up to make sure there's no openings I'm going to click and change my color. I choose a different tool. Make sure the size, I'll change the opacity to 100. There you go. If I ask people what shape this is right here, they would probably tell me it's a circle or trying to be a circle. Okay. I'm going to just change the color and I want you to practice drawing different geometric shapes. Shapes that have names, right, that we can agree on. So most people say that's a triangle. And a rectangle. So these are common geometric shapes. After you draw your geometric shapes, if you want to color them in with, by using the different tools, you can also do that. Okay. And I'll just change the color so you can see that I'm coloring them in. Or if you want to just draw some simple lines within the shapes, you can also do that as practice because we're going to be doing that a lot in our next project. So you can practice using the different tools, colors, and sizes during this note-taking session. After you do this with the geometric shapes, you can go back to your layers panel and you're going to add a new layer. So notice I created a new layer. There's a blue boundary around this box. And I'm going to label this on the right side as freeform shapes. So I'm just going to put the word freeform. Freeform. Two words. Now freeform shapes are different from geometric shapes because freeform shapes are those kind of shapes that occur in nature. They occur naturally and they would not have names that we agree upon. So if I were to ask everybody what the name of this shape is, I would get a lot of different answers. The same thing with this shape right here. So if you don't know the name of a shape, we can just call it a freeform shape if it's looking like this, where it's irregular, looks like it's something that might occur in nature, like a lake, the shape of, of a body of land. Those are examples of freeform shapes. And you can do the same thing with these freeform shapes. So I just want you to practice doing these notes, coloring and using the different tools, and making sure that you know and understand layers. Because with layers, they're a very powerful tool, and I'll show you right now. For instance, I'm on the layer that's for my freeform notes. But let's say if I clicked on my layer for geometric shapes over here, if I click right here, I get my eraser and try to erase what's on my freeform size. Notice that it's not erasing because it's not on the right layer, right? But I, if I go over here to the geometric side, I can start erasing things because I'm on the geometric layer side. Now I want to undo that. Okay. I can also go to this layer right here where I drew this single line and it won't allow me to erase anything else except what's on that layer. So you see I'm trying to erase the geometric but the only thing it's erasing is what's on that initial layer right there that I drew that vertical line going down the paper. So I'm going to also undo this. So I want you to practice using the tools on the left and using the layers.
and we're going to be using this a lot for our next project so just get really comfortable using it and it will also save automatically for you so that's why you have to sign in at the beginning when you're finished it will save it so if I click right here on the home icon you can see that it's right there for you the next time you log in and I can click on it to activate it again and it'll be there I hope you enjoy using this and don't get frustrated with it it is very difficult to use but once you get a hang of it you'll be having a lot of fun with it